guys, I'm David with Media Unlocked, and today we're going to be going over the Canon T2i Magic Lantern 2.3 firmware. And we're going to be going over the overlay settings as well as the movie mode settings. So let's jump right into the overlay settings. Um, the first setting is called Global Draw. <coughs> Excuse me. Now, what Global Draw does is, if you notice, with Global Draw on, you have all these different functions turned on right here. Um, once you turn off Global Draw, let's go ahead and turn it off. You just have your normal setup. You can hit uh, Display, and you can add in your Canon displays as well. Um, but I prefer to use Magic Lantern setup. You can also do Live View. There's a couple different settings you have. I like to keep it on all on and all modes. Seems to work best for me. Next is what's called Zebras. Now what Zebra does is it helps you pick out your over contrast and under contrast objects. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn Zebra on and we've got it set to 2070. So let's go on and pop out and see if we see anything over contrast or under contrast. Um, so <clears throat> it appears that the lens right there as well as over to the right of the screen as well as my hand a little bit seems to be a little under contrast according to Zebra. So this will help you get your color uh, settings uh, your lighting, I should say, not really color, but your lighting um, as even as possible. So let's go on and bounce back into Magic Lantern here. Focus Peaks. Now, Focus Peaks is another way to help you with uh, getting your focus right when you're actually shooting something. So we'll go on and turn on our Focus Peaks, and you can go on and you can do, again, if you hit Q up here, right here, you are able to do uh, some of the things we'll have with submenus, and you can go in and tweak tweak your settings. Some don't, like the global draw, it does not have a submenu as I'm hitting Q and nothing is happening. So, uh, focus peaks. So let's go on and bounce out and see if there's any focus peaks. So as you notice, uh, my focus is a lot around the cannon. We could actually zoom in here and we could get a better focus if we wanted to. And that seems to be pretty good. My lighting's a little off, it's a little dark, I should probably lighten it up. But the focus peaks are going to help you with focusing your video. So we'll go back in a Magic Lantern, turn off focus peaks. Now my f one of my top five favorite features of the Magic Lantern 2.3 version, which has been, this, is, this item has been on other versions as well, it's called Magic Zoom. So we're going to go on and turn Magic Zoom on. And when you hit Magic Zoom, when you hit the, the upper, up right here, up here in the right corner, you'll see that you have a little plus sign. Go on and hit the plus sign. And then Magic Zoom is going to pop on. Now this, like I said, is a little dark so we can go on and, and brighten it up a little bit if we wanted to and we want to zoom in on the lens right here so we'll do a double zoom or a single zoom and then we can use that to help get our focus right now you can go in and you can set this up to where the magic zoom is in different parts of the screen so it's not per se going to be here you can put it here 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 or you can put it right in the middle of the screen i believe as well so you can pick to where you want to have that is and you can pick what size you want it to be in so that's a really, really cool feature, and I think it's the best feature as far as helping getting your focus peaks as perfect as possible. So go on and exit out of that. Next is your crop mark. Something really cool about the crop marks is if you go in, you hit your submenus. As you cycle through each crop mark, you're going to notice that crop mark will actually pop up on a small screen, so you can kind of see what the crop mark is going to look at before you pick the crop mark. So let's say I wanted, this is probably the most used, I would say, crop mark is this, which gives you the... Uh, the black bars on bottom and top um, and you try to keep within those black bars and it gives you more of a wide range or longer shot uh, more like a 16 by 9 shot so we'll go on and exit out of that turn off crop marks next is our ghost image now ghost image is kind of interesting um, there are a lot of different uses for it and everyone's going to use ghost image a little bit differently but so I'm just going to show you how to work ghost image and then you can kind of use it for what you want. A lot of people use it to reset settings or to reset. Well, let me just show you what it is and then I can kind of explain how you can use it a little bit better. So we're going to turn on ghost image. What we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to take a shot. All right, we took our shot and let's, so we, let's pick our display. There we go. And then we're just going to hit the uh, record button here. All right, it's going to take that. Now when we go back out, you're going to notice that that's right on top. So let's say we move this a little bit. As you can see, the lens is coming coming apart because it's an image on top of an image, and now it's set back to exactly where it's at. So 
if you, let's just say I was shooting this and somehow I knocked my lens off and I happened to have this shot. I could use this shot to line my lens right back up. Um, as I, I'll actually show you here. So we're gonna move it, there's the lens, right? So if I wanna line it back up to exactly where that's at, you know, it'd be a little bit difficult, but I think I could do it. And then we're gonna try to get it right back in almost the same exact spot. Nope, almost there. So I can't get it perfect, but I can get it pretty close to almost exactly where the lens is at using Ghost Image. So it's a pretty cool little feature. Again, all you have to do to use it is you'll take a shot, you're gonna hit your play button down here, then you're gonna hit the record button, and then that's the shot that it's going to use, and then you'll just take you right back out to the screen. So we're gonna turn Ghost Image off. Now we have something called defishing. This is um, from what I've read on what it does. Um, it's more for photography based. So if we hit display, you can go in and read a little bit about it. And mainly what it says, it's a preview that rectifies, uh, rectified uh, defished images from Samyang 8mm fisheye lens using a rectangular projection. <clears throat> Again, I don't know exactly 100% what all that means, so if someone does, leave a comment. I'd like to know. I'm always down to learn. So let's bounce back out of that. Spot meter. Now, it's really hard for me to explain spot meter because I'm not an expert on spot meter. But there are three different spot meter modes, and let's see if it's, we've got all three here. But there are three different spot main spot meter modes that comes with most cameras. They, excuse me, Adam, come in the back. I'm shooting a video. Can't talk. Bye. Um, <clears throat> so next is spot meter. Now, what spot meter is, uh, next is 17. Next is spot meter. Now, what spot meter does for you, um, on most Canon cameras, it comes with uh, three, three different settings. They have to do with your colors and different, if I can explain this right, different gray tones or color tones and how it's going to shoot video or take pictures. I'm not an expert at it, so I'm not going to dive too deep into it. Um, but I would, I would be using spot meter, of course, and you've got, uh, you can go into a sub menu and set up what you want. But again, spot meter is not something I, I should know a lot more about being a, photo a professional photographer, but I don't know a terrible, a large amount about it. So I'm going to pursue on here. Uh, next is your false color. Again, that's something I don't know a lot about. I probably should. Uh, this is a tool and you can go and you can read about the false color right here. Uh, your histograms, you have different different histograms you can use. Uh, we can use an RBG, a Luma, if we want to do a Luma histogram here. Histogram has to do with, oops, turn it back on here and go back out. There's your histogram. Now your histogram has to do with your lighting to know if your lighting is well exposed or not. Um, there are a bunch of different ways to make sure that your shot is exposed as, as well as possible. And histogram is one of the ways to do it. Um, and you can go in here and we're gonna turn it back on to RBG and exit back out. And now you have your color tones here. So this is not a perfectly lit situation, but a pretty well lit situation. You probably want your histogram to be a little bit more in the middle. Um, we're kind of dropping off right here, so it's a little, a little uh, darker than it probably should be. We could probably brighten it up a little bit if we wanted to. Actually, let's brighten it up here. And you're gonna notice my histogram moving to the right. Now I'm a little bit overexposed, so we probably wanna bring it back down. And I would say that's pretty close to a pretty comfortable exposure right there. So next is your wave form. Again, something I don't know a lot about. It says, these exposure tools will show you the distribution of image brightness levels. So you can turn that on and use it. We'll go and turn it on and see what happens here. And then you can use that right here, down here, to get your image settings as well. And then you have your vector scope. Now, vector scope has to do with color grading. Um, and it helps you with, I guess, post-color grading. And so you can turn that on and uh, your vector scope is here. And you can use this to, again, get your colors correct as well. Okay guys, so now that we've finished overlay, let's jump over to the movie settings and let's work our way down that list as well. Now the first is going to be your bitrate CVR, which is a default at 1.0. Now I do have a class 10 uh, 16 gig transcend card in there, so 
it should be able to handle a 3.0 setting and I should be able to record at 3.0 which is going to be the highest quality possible so let's go on and hit the record button and see see how she handles um, again if your card ever gets to the point where you have your bit rate too high and it keeps doing the movie uh, error restart thing um, the best way to fix that if you don't need audio turn your audio settings off it's going to do a lot better it won't uh, the buffer won't buff out as fast and your card can handle now if you have like a class 4 class 6 class 8 card um, a 3.0 is not going to be able to do very well it will probably every time it will probably give you two or three seconds of recording and then stop on you so you're going to need a faster card i have a pretty fast card in my camera right now so it can handle a 3.0 as you can see let's go on and stop recording here and i'm going to go turn off all of these here so we don't have a bunch of stuff um, all over the screen um, next is going to be oh as well i guess before we jump away from cb uh, the cbr bitrate you can go in and you can manually change stuff up you can go back to the uh, the original Q scale if you wanted to, but the CBR seems to be a higher quality and better setting, and I like it a lot better, so I use it. Now you can do a time indicator, uh, at, and man, what that does is uh, just during your recording, it's just a reminder. You know, you're about to hit your your limit at four gigs, but you can go in. And you can, uh, I believe, you can change. You can turn it on or off, elapse. Uh, it tells you how much how much is left on your card. So this is just a way to find out how much time you have left for recording um, and I use the four gig rule. Uh, movie logging um, again it has to do with your logging the movies and how you're going to save it with metadata information from my understanding and uh, and you can turn that on so I keep it off I don't really use it and I don't know any you know I really don't have a need for it. Movie restart is a fantastic thing for people out there that are going to be shooting longer than 12 minutes per shot. What movie restart does is when you hit your 12 minute mark, uh, your camera's going to stop. You can't help it, it's going to stop. So when your camera start, stops, it's going to restart. It's a little bit faster than, um, than probably starting and stopping it yourself. And the other nice thing is you don't necessarily have to be around your camera, say you're shooting a concert or something like that. You're not going to have to be around your camera to uh, to restart it because it will automatically do it itself as well if you're using two cameras the smartest way to do it is have the cameras um, starting at different times so that means that while one camera is starting and restart stopping and restarting the other camera is still recording so that you don't miss that footage you just have it at a different angle next is and we'll go on and turn that off and we'll turn this off for now actually I leave this on so we're going to leave that on and the movie restart I turn on and off if I need to uh, custom record standby notification visual or audible so um, and you have these different different things beep start stop off red cross so let's do the red cross we'll go back out and it's gonna let you know that you're not recording so you have different ways to, to, to help yourself know when you're not recording um, record standby come out it's on standby right now when I'm recording it's gonna let me know hey you're recording and we'll see what the third option does here uh, beeps. So we'll keep the. Uh, oh, we'll go back to beeps. And it's going to beep when it starts and stops. So um, if I was going to use one, um, I would probably keep it on the record and standby. Um, this one is pretty good too. Um, I don't know if you've ever done it. I know I have at some point in time of. Uh, started recording or thought I was recording and shooting and I wasn't the whole you know 15 minutes that I thought I was you know working on it on a clip I've done it a few times so this is a great way to keep up with that uh, the movie record key um, so this changes how you can record it if you want to if you want to be able to start you can do like a half shutter and it should start recording on there you go and another half shutter will stop it for you and as you can see, it says I'm not recording. Turn that off. Force a live view. Uh, you can force it always, even though like I should. If I if it does or if it does the way it is, since I've got it set to always, it should. It's going to force live view, even though I don't have. Uh, even though I just took my lens off. So let's hook my lens back up. And it's kind of hard to see it, so I'm going to have to dip over here and be able to line it up properly. So you can force live view if you want, and that's one way to do it. Turn it off. Shutter lock. You can lock your shutter. Very simple. 
And then you have your frames per second override. Now I'd like to know a little bit about th more about this if anybody does, but from what I've read and from what I understand of how it works, is it actually, you can get up to 60 frames per second if I'm understanding this right. And we'll go on and set that uh, at 60 and come back out. And I should be shooting at 65 frames per second instead of 60. Um, if I'm wrong, someone let me know so I can uh, go in and correct it. But if I'm reading this right and understanding the what this had to tell me right here, this allows you to shoot at a higher frame rate. Uh, HDR video is pretty awesome. You can set all your values and everything up here if you want to do uh, your ISO and your ISO A and ISO B, which is going to, and I'll actually show you what it looks like when you're recording. So let's go on and start recording. And it's going to, it's, I guess it disables your sound as well. And what it's doing right now is it's capturing frames that are, over, that are properly exposed, underexposed, and it's going to do, and when you edit it, if you do it right, you can get those exposures different, and it looks like an HDR video. Um, I do have a tutorial, which I'll pop up on the screen right now, on how to do HDR video. Um, I've done a, a walk through a while back. So let's go on and stop recording, and go down to our last one, image effects. So you just have different, very basic different effects that you can do, that you can turn on, and it's going to give your video a different look. Um, I still got the HDR turned on, we can go on and pop that off. So you have the image effects. So hopefully this guys, this helped you out a little bit. Uh, we still have at least, let's see here, we've still got a few more menus to go through here. So we got a couple more videos coming your way for the T2i and the T3i. Um, sorry it's taking me so long in between each videos. I'm just a very, very busy person and I don't have as much time as I'd like to, to uh, put into these and shoot them. So um, a lot of times I have to do a little research too because I don't know what every function does and I try to be as well prepared as possible when I do these videos. But again, there's just some things that I'm not an expert at and I'm not going to sit here and try to tell you that I am. Check us out on Facebook at David D. Images or Twitter at Media Unlocked. Um, as well, all the links will be in your description bar down below. And uh, you guys have a wonderful day. Leave comments and messages. Love to hear from you.